intervention will be on uh, four concepts, the parliament, people, social media, and the European elections. And don't forget that uh, the European elections, by the way, are the biggest democratic exercise in the world. One year before the elections, uh, it's obvious to me that uh, because of the economic crisis and because of the effects of this economic crisis, these elections will be different uh, from all the past ones. For the first time, there will be probably, and I underline probably, a real European campaign on real European issues. Could be uh, with uh, these European issues uh, at the center of the debate, with different recepts, with different solutions or proposals of solutions by the different political families in Europe, and then for different reasons uh, for the choice of parties and candidates. And this was not uh, like that or as that until, until last elections in 2009. Um, but it's quite clear also to me that uh, now, nowadays, uh, right now, the European Union is suffering of a, a lack of legitimacy or at least a lack of credibility. And these elections could be or should be an opportunity for the European Union and its institutions to connect with people. And I say connect, I know that in the program we proposed reconnect, but uh, uh, after some reflection when preparing these notes, I arrived to the conclusion that in fact, what we should do is uh, connect uh, and not reconnect, because in my opinion, uh, until now, this connection between the European Union and the citizens has never existed until now simply because it was not necessary or because uh, nobody thought until now that uh, it was necessary. But now, when the European Union has become uh, a real power uh, with direct impact on key uh, areas of people's lives, this connection is uh, essential. This connection becomes essential. What does it mean for us connecting with people? Sending information, providing information, sharing communication? No. Connection... Uh, well, first of all, connection doesn't mean loving. Connection doesn't mean not even liking. People love people. People, does, uh, people don't love uh, institutions. Or as Americans say, love your congressman, but hate the Congress. <laughs> and in the case of the European Parliament, it's more or less the same. Connecting for us simply uh, means, first of all, in my opinion, assuring people that they are fully represented by the members they voted for, uh, that the institution plays its role in scrutinizing the European government, and that the members, and this is maybe the most important, that the members are open to listening uh, to people's concerns every single day for the five-year period they have been elected for. That's connecting people with MEPs or connecting the people with the European Parliament. So in spite of uh, this crisis of uh, EU legitimacy, there are reasons to hope and uh, reasons uh, not to give up. Just two figures. 75% of Europeans think that Parliament plays an important role today, but even more important probably, 54% of Europeans would like the European Parliament to play a more important role in the future. But we should keep in mind uh, that the output, and I mean uh, the results of the European policies, or the results of the parliamentary work is not enough anymore. The input, and the input being uh, a representative democracy where people feel involved in the decision-making process, is also indispensable. So here, there are two main points of my presentation uh, today. First, information through traditional, through classic media is key in communicating about the output but in the same way, communication through social media should play a critical role in making the input possible. So there is a role for traditional media and another, probably a different one, for the new and for social uh, media. But in both cases, new strategies and tactics in communication are needed for placing the parliament near the citizens. That's our job for the next uh, 13 months. How? giving the media what the media needs, making a two-way communication possible between the members and their electorate, and not between citizens and the institution. People are not interested in discussing 
with the institution as such. People is not interested in discussing with me or with my teams. People are interested in discussing with the members or with some of members of the parliament. And third question, helping to shape uh, European public opinion, which I think partially exists, uh, but which is hardly visible because of the lack uh, of um, transnational media. So for the Parliament's media services, for people working uh, close to me, collaborating with the media is still uh, the priority for many reasons. Direct communication with the citizens is not possible by bypassing the media. Don't forget the media. Media is still essential. Let's take into account that for obtaining information, still now, information about the European Parliament, Europeans are using mostly television, 64%. The web, of course, 43%, and the written press going down uh, 33%. What's our problem with media? Our problem with media is TV, is our low presence on television. The media report uh, a lot about the European Parliament. If I compare what they were doing 20 years ago when I started in the European Parliament as a young functionnaire in Luxembourg, uh, the situation now is uh, completely different. But this is not enough to demonstrate the legitimacy, of, le the legitimacy of the European Parliament or to increase participation in the elections. Maybe, maybe, because the Parliament is not presented by the media as what it really is, a Parliament, and not just another monolithic and secretive Brussels institution. A parliament is a plural body, a parliament is not an executive, in a parliament is not, uh, uh, never one just single voice. The European Parliament is quite present in the written media, but as I said, not enough on television. Why? Because TV is interested in hot news and in political battles, not in meeting rooms where people tend to find an agreement after months of technical discussions. Because MEPs, even if they have right now more influence than MPs in the national parliaments, are mostly unknown. Because languages are still a barrier. And maybe also because national events are closer and easier to explain. So on the how then we could improve the presence of European politics uh, in media or in the traditional media. In my opinion, it's crucial to show the European politics in the same way as national politics. Show the European Parliament as the place where the representatives of the Europeans confront their projects and build majorities and minorities. And because of these majorities or these minorities, decision, decisions will be taken in a different way. For example, journalists tend to report on the institutional actions instead of dramatizing the European politics or policies as they do at national level. So far, Europe is only dramatized when there is something directly linked to the national sphere, with, uh, in some way, counteracting the national politics. There is almost no perception of a left, right, or center European policy. It's always one institution against another, or is the EU elite against my own country. The positive effect of the crisis, if there is a positive effect of this economic crisis, is that for the first time, political parties will have different propositions. Left, right, right and center policies will be more underlined. But this is not enough. Traditional media are vital in raising awareness about EU politics or about the work uh, the, European Parliament is, the European Parliament is doing. But as I said, uh, it cannot help us to create this real connection with the citizen and even less in shaping a coherent European public opinion. Hence, we really need social media to enable the dialogue with the citizens and opinion shapers online, which is the base of the European public sphere, and to connect the citizens directly with the MEPs. And we are working a lot on that, uh, creating and feeding a large and growing uh, community. The European Parliament right now has the largest mm, online community of any parliament so far. For example, 730,000 Facebook fans. We are active on 12 uh, social networks, from uh, Facebook to LinkedIn, from Flickr to Foursquare, from Twitter, YouTube. And up to now, uh, three-fourths of the MEPs are active on Facebook, and almost half of them are daily using uh, Twitter. 
we have even invented a new platform which we, we call the, the News Hub, uh, a tool which in fact is aggregating uh, in real time all items published online, online by the members, by the president, by the institution, by the political groups with more than uh, 1,000 updates per day, which means a lot of material which is coming directly from the actors within the European Parliament. Twitter and Facebook make it possible for MEPs uh, to listen and to learn from citizens. And there are lots of good examples of that. Maybe uh, the most complete uh, example is ACTA, the discussion about ACTA. ACTA was refused, was re rejected by the European Parliament. Why? Because of uh, the work of citizens, not only the typical or traditional lobbies, but simple individual citizens using social media to connect with the MEPs and to influence MEPs about this piece of legislation. And in five months, it can be checked easily, in five months, the majority of the parliament uh, turned from uh, being in favor of ACTA to be against uh, ACTA. There are other examples, of course, but in any case, I must say that in the last one year or one year and a half, for the first time, normal people can become a lobby thanks to social media, to this possibility uh, to have direct access uh, to the members. The European Parliament social media team follows two main uh, principles when managing their platforms. One, content is king. Social interaction relies on high quality content uh, to support it. And I will uh, provide you, show you three examples. And then you have to embrace the risk. So when speaking about content, first example, we have to provide uh, the real transparency about the work of the parliament. We have to open the windows of the parliament how? With the live and on-demand video of all parliamentary meetings, committees, plenaries, hearings, everything must be accessible to everybody in Europe or, of course, even abroad. So I can say, and I think it's right, that the European Parliament is now the most transparent and accessible parliament in Europe. Second example, video ready to be used. We have to take advantage to the new technologies uh, to engage with people, not only through text, also uh, with uh, all kinds uh, of uh, images. And then uh, the importance of uh, infographics. Infographics in 22 languages. Infographics in some way, we could say, are the press releases of social media. They are easily shareable by everyone. They are successful. They are also uh, quite uh, uh, useful for media. The second principle, as I said, is embracing the risk. As we say in our social media teams, fail often, fail quick, fail cheap. And communicating through uh, those social media involves embracing this risk, not freaking out over failure. Even if we work for institutions, which tend to be all of them conservative, and uh, conservative institutions don't want to lose control. And it's important to learn from criticism, that's obvious, but at the same time, uh, it's also important to tune out uh, unproductive uh, haters. So, the European elections 2014 are a new opportunity for us. Since 2008, the Parliament has demonstrated not only that institutions can engage in online conversations, but that they must engage in these online conversations. The elections uh, in 2014 will be different because the Parliament will elect the President of the Commission, which means that there will be leading candidates this time, candidates who uh, will need to raise the electoral debate beyond the national borders. The only way to do this will be using transnational platforms, including an intensive use of social media in order not to be limited by national and media borders. And before and during the elections, uh, DGCOM in the European Parliament uh, should highlight the European dimension of this uh, 2014 elections campaign. There will be 28 national, national campaigns, as always. We cannot avoid that. But for the, for the first time, hopefully, also a pan-European umbrella campaign. 
and the EP communications uh, services should only do what no one can or will do at our place. So, and last but not least, our duties are to identify relevant online conversation, to propose added value in existing conversations, and to engage citizens with uh, politicians uh, via those conversations. So, in one word, and to finally uh, conclude, contrary to this uh, madman, <laughs> if it doesn't want to change the conversation, if it doesn't like the subject, it wants more and better conversations on every political subject. Thank you very much. Thank you.